per hour. It's nearly stationary. We haven't seen a great deal of movement today. The pressure uh, now a nine. Let's take a look at a satellite view, and you can see uh, here's Opal. Uh, here's the Yucatan Peninsula, of course, the Gulf Coast here. What we've got, you can see uh, plenty of convection here, and what we're seeing is uh, the center is somewhere right in this area. We're seeing uh, more convection developing around the center. Now, if that trend continues, well, we may be seeing uh, a strengthening trend uh, beginning. In Opal in the Gulf of Mexico, let me go ahead and show you the current position. This is based at 11 o'clock, centered at 21 0 92.5, and that's about 185 miles west of Maryland. Now, what I would like to see in order to uh, be a little more confident that this might begin to turn to the north, I'd like to see it begin to do it a little bit now. And right now, even looking at the satellite picture, maybe just a tiny bit, but not very much. So because of the possibility this could move faster and a very good possibility we think that it could strengthen, we want you folks all along the north Gulf Coast uh, to... Uh, pay attention and we'll certainly keep you up to date as time goes by Which on that. you won't find anywhere else. This is Weather Scope This Morning, sponsored by 100% Colombian Coffee. For a scope of coverage you won't find anywhere else, this is Weather Scope This Morning. Good morning, Jim Cantori live in the Weather Channel Forecast Center, continuing to update you on a very dangerous situation here with Hurricane Opal, as we've seen uh, some phenomenal meteorological happenings with this thing. For example, the eye has shrunk nearly three times its size in less than 12 hours, which is just incredible. And I've never seen uh, an eye of seven nautical miles. Remember Hurricane Gilbert back in 88? That had an eye of eight nautical miles. This thing is seven nautical miles. Anyway, we'll describe what this thing means. We've got a very dangerous situation shaping up for the Gulf Coast and inland as well. Let's get to the latest radar on this. This is out of New Orleans. It's the Doppler, and I wanted to show you the extensive rainfall that continues to occur from the Louisiana Delta all the way across the Florida Panhandle and even farther out of this radar range. But even down to the bottom of your screen there, you can see that little twisting thing. That is the eye of the hurricane. This is the, high, the eye of Hurricane Opal. I'll just point this out for you right here. And you can just see how small that little blue dot is. That is where the eye is right there. That is where the eye is. And out anywhere from 12 to 15 miles, you've got a band of winds, ladies and gentlemen, that are anywhere from 120 to 100 and potentially 50 miles per hour with gusts. So, I mean, tremendous windfall in that area, and that is the area we are extremely concerned about because that is going to wipe out a section of the Gulf Coast as we go on into tonight. Again, you can see the satellite. This is the infrared. We've colorized the tops. You can see the big swirling mass here, the central dense overcast, the eye of the hurricane right there, that seven nautical mile eye, and as it continues to move on off toward the north-northeast. We are talking about a potential landfall uh, tonight, this evening, between 8 and midnight around Pensacola. Now, I caution you extremely here from Apalachicola, uh, even perhaps even west of Mobile, you cannot let your guard down because any type of jog with this thing could change its direction entirely and where it makes landfall this evening. So this is something we have to concern ourselves Again, with. folks, we are dealing with an Andrew-type storm, possibly even stronger, if you can imagine that. And one thing we did not deal with with Andrew that we're going to deal with with this thing is going to be the storm surge. It's going to be tremendous here in the northeastern Gulf. Let's get into this a little bit more uh, as we go behind me and check out the current wind gusts. Again, Bill was mentioning maybe nearly 40 mile per hour winds up on the panhandle. These are the current gusts that we have for you, but they will pick up throughout the course of the day along the panhandle and into Louisiana. So again, if you're thinking about last minute preparations, conditions are going to go downhill in a hurry. Look at this advisory. 135 mile per hour winds. This thing's 150 miles to the south-southeast of the mouth of the Mississippi River. And the pressure has come up a little bit from the uh, recon and the hurricane hunters at 921 millibars. So at least that's good news. We've seen it bottom out a little bit. But still, the winds are kind of catching up with that pressure fall that we dealt with last night. So now you've gone from a, from a Cat 1, Cat 2 storm all the way down to a Cat 4, and look at the winds here, 131 to 150 miles an hour. And uh, you're talking about extreme, extreme damage, catastrophic type damage potentially in a very, very small area near that eye. And as Bill uh, was showing you that pier behind you, if this eye comes very close to that, 
that pier is going to be history. Storm surge, again, this is one of the big deals with this storm. 12 to 20 feet potentially, even at the time of low tide, which we think is when this is going to come in. Uh, you know, let's say that it does come in in western Florida and east of Mobile. You're talking about right in through here, this little convex area that's going to see tremendous piling of the water well over the barrier islands, well over the coastal highways and inland. Now, another problem with this, I have to emphasize, not only is this a problem for the coastline and the western panhandle in eastern and southeastern Alabama, but inland. Inland, this is going to be big. You've got a 135-mile-an-hour hurricane. Yeah, it's small, and yeah, it's tight, but you don't wind these things down in a couple of hours. It's going to take several hours for this hurricane to wind down, and you can see the rainfall that has already occurred in this area on the tune of 3 to 9 inches of rain. You've got saturated soils. You're going to throw 50, 60, 70, potentially 80-plus-mile-an-hour winds over this area. If you live in Montgomery, if you live in Columbus, if you live in in Birmingham, Atlanta, Chattanooga, Knoxville. This is your hurricane, too, and you will have to be prepared to lose power potentially for more than uh, a maybe a couple of days, maybe even as much as a week, because this is going to affect more than just the coastline. It's going to come right into the southeast. Remember, Hugo, what it did to Charlotte? Same kind of deal. This is going to go right up and affect interior, the, the interior of the southeast as well. So uh, again, folks, along the coast, you've got to be prepared to move inland. If you live inland, be prepared for loss of power and tremendous destruction as we work our way on in time. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. I'm Joe Brown here in the Weather Channel studio, joined by John Hope, our hurricane specialist. We're tracking Hurricane Opal, now a Category 4 hurricane. Let's get a quick look at it on satellite, and then we'll go back with some of the specifics and some of the latest information that we have had. A uh, look at the satellite picture here shows us the central dense overcast here and the darker red. And you can see how close it is getting to land at this point. And believe it or not, it looks like this is the second hurricane this season, John, that's headed right for Pensacola. Yes, but we want to emphasize this is a much more powerful hurricane than the other one was. This is a Category 4 hurricane, the, the uh, Aaron was Category 1, and the damage that we can expect... Of course, that the eye wall is down to 5 miles. What is the significance well, of that? Well, that's incredibly small. A lot of times in these hurricanes that get to be Category 4s or 5s, you have this very small eye. I'm not sure I ever saw one quite down to 5 miles. But the good news is that I think that the pressure has stopped falling. In fact, it's come up a fair amount. It was all the way down to 916 millimeters bars and now it's up to uh, over uh, 934 millibars. That on Doppler radar actually and we can show it to you. If we go full I can uh, show you if we can outline this a little bit. Band of rain here, very heavy but tropical storm force winds with that. What will be different here is this next batch of rain that comes in. Very heavy rain again after perhaps a small lull and this batch of heavy rain will also have hurricane force winds with it. And you can see the eye right through here, again only five miles wide. And right about this spot they are already reporting hurricane force winds. Uh, I think a constant hurricane force winds, is that correct, John? Mm -hmm. And Jill, I have a new uh, message here from the National Hurricane Center. They have a new advisory out at 12 noon Central Daylight Time, and the uh, winds have diminished a little bit. They're down to 135 miles an hour, so at least that is good news. There's quite a difference between 135 and 150. Still a Category 4, though. Right, that's, that is great news. How does this compare to Andrew or Hugo, which we well know. This is very much like Hugo. That's about exactly the same pressure Hugo had at landfall, and it's a little higher than, than Andrew. Andrew was down, I think, about 922 millibars of landfall. So the, if measured by the pressure, not quite as strong as Andrew, but very much like Hugo. Okay. Now, the one thing we're going to see hurricane force wind. And Joe, we want to talk a little bit about the inland effects of this. Now, hurricanes, when they move inland, a lot depends on, number one, how strong the hurricane is at landfall. If it's a strong hurricane, then it goes inland farther. But the speed of movement is very important, and this is moving about 20 miles an hour, a little better, and that means that hurricane force winds are going to persist longer inland for greater distance. Uh, right. Something like Hugo. In Hugo, we had hurricane force winds all the way from Charleston to uh, South Carolina to Charlotte, North Carolina. So folks, if this moves as quickly as it is now, we could still have tropical, at least a tropical storm, well inland. What can folks do at that point if you're up, say, Birmingham, Atlanta, all the way up to Chattanooga? Well, what they need to do for the kind of winds to expect there, they need to sort of police up around the place, uh, not have any loose furniture in the yard and that sort of thing. And be aware that if you have trees, this wind is very likely strong enough for some of those trees to go down. 